this video, I'm going to review steps three and four of using the clearance analysis tool in OCalc Pro. In our previous two videos, we covered how to go about creating rules and violations and creating clearance groups, and then how to go about assigning those clearance groups to different spans. So in this video, we'll go through first the next step, which is going to be setting our additional parameters for where the tool is going to run. So we can begin by going up under Edit, oh, I'm sorry, Tools, down to Clearance Analysis, and then going to Clearances and Violations, which will open up this window here. In this window, what we can see is a vector and also where our surface is. I'm going to delete these just to show sort of a clean slate how one would begin going about doing this. So initially when you open this over here, your profile is blank and there are no vectors. The easiest way to think of a vector is where you're telling OCalc to look for a violation. In this particular poll, and it's a little difficult to see, but you can see that there are only spans going from the pole towards zero degrees. So it makes sense that there would only be violations in that zero degree direction because there are no spans anywhere else on the pole. So what you can do is select add, and then in this vector angle, you can put in an angle where you would like OCalc to look. So you can hit OK, and it will create a vector at zero degrees. So now this tool will run looking at this zero degrees angle. I'm going to delete this just to demonstrate another feature here. Now, if you have multiple vectors on this pole, say if this were a tangent pole and the spans were running towards zero degrees and 180 degrees, you could use this other button called auto, which will create vectors at all the current span angles. So for more complicated structures, this may be easier. You just hit yes, and again, 360 degrees also corresponds to the zero degree vector. So whichever label is shown here is fine. Now, before the clearance tool can run, it does have to have, at the very least, a ground surface. You do have to have a ground line, which is why in a previous video we were prompted to set up a default for the surface. So we can add one here just by going under the Add option. We're going to add a surface. And then the surface I set up in the first video is the ground surface. You can leave distance to the to the pole blank and also the surface height blank. What distance to pole does is it sets how far along that vector you're going to be looking. By leaving it at zero, it will automatically look for however long the span length is. So if the span length is 100 feet, it will look for 100 feet. Surface height can be set if you have an elevation or are on an incline or a decline. You can set that up here and it will slowly have a surface that slopes. For right now, I'm just going to leave it at zero and hit OK. And you'll see that what it has done is down here essentially is where the ground line is. And once it knows where the ground line is, it can start to model all of our other spans. The spans shown here are all of these spans that I've dropped a clearance group tag onto. If you remember from video two, there is a process to go through where you're adding one of these tags to each of the spans, and then you can see each of those spans here. Now, once this is set up, you can go ahead and run the tool to see if any of our rules are being violated. So I'm going to come up under clearance analysis and do for all vectors to generate this, which essentially is our clearance analysis report which is going to be sort of a lead in to step four. So what this report is telling us is that there were two violations found. The first is our ground clearance rule. The message here is indicating that this rule was violated. And you'll see down here, it tells us what the clearance is that's supposed to be required and what the actual is. So right now our ground clearance should be 18 feet but we're only at 16.5 feet, so that bottom communication span would have to go up a little bit. Then we're also violating our power to comm clearance rule, where we should have a clearance of 4 feet and our current clearance is 2 feet. 
So this kind of leads us into step four, which is going to be using this report to make appropriate changes. I'm going to close this window. I'm going to close this window as well. Now that clearance analysis report can also be found here under your reports tab under clearance report that gives you that same information. But the first thing I would want to do based on my report is to adjust the height of this communication span down here. Now the single bolt here is at a height of 17 feet. According to our clearance analysis report, the violation is actually at 16.5 feet, so it's taking that sag into account. So we actually need to raise this up a little bit higher. We could try maybe 19 feet. And then at the top of our poll, we do have some violations here as well. All of these items, our primary, neutral, and secondary, are really close to this communication span here. So that's what's violating that four foot clearance rule. So there's two methods we could use here. One would be to just lower this communication, which shouldn't be up this high anyway. We can click on our single bolt and see that it's currently at 33. So this should probably be lower. We can go ahead and set this to 21. Then we'll move our communication down a little bit. So with those modifications, we also happen to be passing now. We can go back to our reports. And if we look on this report, we can see that no clearance issues were detected. So that concludes how we can use our clearance analysis report and then how we can go about using its findings to modify our structure to make sure we're not violating any rules. Now, this was a very simplified example. Typically, a rules file can be a little bit more complicated, and you'll want to make sure that across your organization, everyone is using the same rules file. So what you can do is generate the rules file in one OCALC session, and under Tools, under Clearance Analysis, under Clearance Rules Maintenance, you can export those clearance rules, and it will save them somewhere on your computer. And then what you can do for the other users is have them import the clearance rules, and they can bring in that file just to make sure that there's some consistency in the rules that are being used.